Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever you're watching this, good whatever day it is. This is a quick everything you know about the legislative branch, at least most of. I'm probably going to forget one or two things because you know what? I'm just not perfect. So legislative branch, it is in Article 1 of the Constitution. It is the most in-depth article of the Constitution. Uh, it has the most to it. Uh, the legislative branch has the most power out of the three branches, although there are checks and balances to keep them, you know, from being too powerful. Uh, their job, main one, know this, make the laws. It is bicameral, means there's two houses in the legislative branch. One, the House of Representatives, and two, the Senate. Total members, 535. Now let's talk about why there's two houses. The Senate is supposed to be like the 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 bonds okay each state represented together as the same there doesn't matter about your population because every state is going to get two senators doesn't matter if you are as small as wyoming or as big as california you always get two senators and then the house is supposed to be like where the people are okay it's the people's house every state is going to get representatives based on population and no matter how big your state is you're going to get at least one. So that's how they're broken up. But together, collectively, they are called Congress. And Congress makes the laws. And they do this in the Capitol building in D.C. So let's get to it. Let's start with the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives, 435 members. Remember, done based on population. There are restrictions on being a House member. And they're a little bit different than the Senate members uh, in the sense that they're less restrictive. To be a House of Representatives congressman or congresswoman, you have to be a citizen of the United States for a minimum of seven years. You have to live in the state that you reside in, and you have to be at least 25 years old. You will serve two-year terms, which means every two years you have to run for re-election, and every two years you're risking the biscuit to get kicked out. So it is the people's house. It is done by districts. Each uh, state breaks up their state into districts. Each district is represented by one person. You are living in District 17. Uh, Sherry Bustos is your representative in the House. And how these districts are made are based on the census, census which is taken every 10 years. The census is going to be uh, tally up how many people live where in the state, and the districts will be shaped uh, by either the late state legislators or a kind of like a conglomeration of the governor slash state legislators in a variety of different ways. It depends on the state, to be honest with you. We will talk about gerrymandering. Gerrymandering is a way that you can draw the lines of the districts that will negate certain political parties, and we'll see the different examples of this throughout the country. Uh, and not necessarily in Illinois. There is, there's kind of an issue with uh, District 4, but we'll talk about why District 4 is shaped like earmuffs because uh, it does look really strange. Uh, but it's not necessarily a gerrymandering thing. It actually has to do with the people there, but we'll talk about that in class. So that is the House. Now remember, the House has the Speaker. Uh, the Speaker of the House is actually the third in line of the presidency. If you count the president himself, it goes president, vice president, and then Speaker of the House uh, is the next in line. And is Nancy Pelosi is the Speaker of the House currently. Um, and she is a Democrat. And let's get on to the Senate. One thing about the House, if you're going to pass legislation, uh, it has to start there if it deals with money. So anything to do with money, it's going to start in the, in, the, in the House. So let's get to the Senate. Senate is going to have two members per state. We talked about this already. Their restrictions to be a senator are as follows. You have to be 30 years old, so five more years than that of the House members, which is ironically or kind of nice to remember because to be president, you have to be 35 years old. So it goes 25 for the House, 30 for the Senate, and 35 years old for to be a president of the United States. You have to be a citizen of your state that you are representing, and you have to be a citizen of the United States uh, at least for nine years before you can get that. Now, your election cycle is a little bit different. It's not every two years like the House. It's every... Six years. Wow, fingers. You got to make sure I do six right. Uh, so six years. So basically, once you get elected, you're good for six years until you have to be reelected again. Um, this works kind of nice, though, because about one third approximately of the Senate members are up for reelection every election cycle. But still, once they're elected, six years in. There you go. Uh, the president, if you will, of the Senate is uh, going to be the vice president, who actually is a symbolic job that only does anything if there's a tie for a vote. Because right now, there are, it's always going to be even numbers because it's two per state. So even if we got another state, it'd be 52 Senate, or sorry, 102 senators instead of 100. 
Uh, it still potentially could be a tie vote, and that is what the, uh, the vice president will do, is if there is a tie vote, the vice president will cast the tie-breaking vote. It does happen. It's not often, but it does happen. So uh, that's their job uh, in there. There is also the majority leader and the minority leader. Uh, these positions are put in based on the political parties who have either the majority or minority within Congress. So the majority party right now, because of Kamala Harris being the vice president, who is the tie-breaking vote, so that counts technically as the last person to make it a minority or majority. Uh, but the minority leader is Chuck Schumer, and the minority leader is Mitch McConnell of the Republicans, uh, and those are the people that are in place for the Senate. So uh, just keep in mind uh, the restrictions, regulations, the Senate. Uh, if you ever have a situation where the president tries to veto a law that is passed within the House and within the Senate, uh, then you will see that uh, you need a two-thirds vote in both chambers to override the veto, which has happened uh, in several different times throughout history. Uh, let's get to, uh, other than making laws, let's see if there's anything else uh, that you need to know about these two. I'm just going through my notes here. Uh, oh, you should know your two senators. Uh, you should know that you have two senators, obviously, two senators for your state. Uh, you have Tammy Duckworth, who is senator, the, one of the senators for, or for the state of Illinois, and uh, Dick Durbin is the other senator from Illinois. So those are your two senators that you know. And the House member, of course, is Sherry Bustos uh, for District 17. There is a process for legislation, in other words, passing legislation throughout the House and the Senate. Remember, money always starts in the House and uh, it has to get passed, and then the Senate passes theirs, and they usually have to do a joint. It all starts in committees. So basically, a bill can be proposed by a, a lawmaker, uh, by the president, or by a constituent. Constituent is a fancy term, but it's for the citizens in which the representatives represent. And, and then once that is proposed, it goes to a committee, and then it goes to another committee, and then they vote, and then they vote. And then it goes on to the House floor if it says yes, 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 and then it's on the House floor, and then they debate it, and then they eventually vote. And if it passes there, it goes to the Senate, and then the Senate has committees, and then they put it on the floor, and then they, they vote on it, and then, and then, well, first they debate on it, and then they vote on it, and then, and then, and then after that, they, it goes, and then it's passed. Um, most likely, though, it's going to have to go through another set of committees, because if the Senate doesn't vote the exact same bill in that the House did, uh, then they have to go to a joint committee, which actually produces legislation that is kind of like a combination or a hybrid between the two. Uh, and then that's it. There's also this thing called the filibuster, which is, uh, <laughs> um, it's uh, basically where the Senate can, uh, Senate members can stand up there and they're, they're supposed to sit, stand there and talk. Uh, and the longest running person that did, I forget his name, but he talked for 24 hours. Uh, and, but what happens now is it's kind of a charade uh, or a, a kind of just a circus. Uh, we've had senators that have gone up there and read entire Dr. Seuss books. Uh, instead of actually talking about the bill that, that they um, reject or don't like. Um, we've had senators talk about other nonsense. Um, so it's it's kind of used in a way to block legislation to talk about Dr. Seuss. I don't know what to tell you folks on that one. Uh, but that is uh, the, the Article 1, which is the legislative branch. Make sure you know all this stuff for the test uh, coming up in May 20-something. Uh, and also know for the quiz for this week on Thursday. Peace out.